Until about 220 million years ago, New England and North Africa were next door neighbors. There was no such thing as the Atlantic Ocean. Those thin blue fingers at the center, they were lakes. They were the first outward signs that the supercontinent was splitting apart and that life on Earth was due for another big shakeup. A million years later, the lakes became a long bay, which would grow into the Atlantic Ocean. These profound changes at the surface were merely symptoms of a drama that was unfolding far beneath in the depths of the Earth. By the time we got here, the telltale traces of global upheaval were buried at the bottom of the deep blue sea. We were completely cut off from the great story of Earth's violent past. A species of amnesiacs trying to find out who we were and what happened before we awakened. In 1570, Abraham Ortelius created the first modern world atlas, reflecting the discoveries of the previous 80 years the golden age of exploration. Before the ink was dry, Ortelius stepped back from his masterpiece and became the first of many to notice the striking puzzle piece fit between the continents on either side of the Atlantic. He later wrote that the Americas were torn away from Europe and Africa by earthquakes and floods. But Ortelius' observation remained nothing more than a hunch for the next couple of centuries. Until, an early 20th century German astronomer and meteorologist amassed the evidence to build the scientific case for it. Alfred Wagner had been drafted during the First World War, but was wounded soon after. As he recovered in a field hospital, he scoured scientific literature for clues to the Earth's past. Years before, Wagner had happened upon an intriguing paper in the stacks of his university library. It puzzled Wagner that fossils of the same species of a now extinct fern were reported to be found on both sides of the Atlantic. Even more curious were the discoveries of fossils of the same dinosaurs on both continents. In the early 20th century, geologists explained how life crossed the oceans by imagining that land bridges had once existed between them. It was thought that these bridges gradually disintegrated and vanished beneath the waves long ago. But there was one piece of evidence that convinced Wagner that the prevailing scientific view must be wrong. The Earth itself. Why would a mountain range cross the oceanic divide to continue on another continent? And why would you find the same unique pattern in the layers of rocks in both Brazil and South Africa? And another thing. Under what circumstances could tropical plants have flourished in the frozen wastes of the Arctic? Wagner concluded that there was only one logical solution to this puzzle. There had once been a single supercontinent on Earth. He named it Pangaea. So Wagner becomes the toast of the scientific world, right? Not exactly. Most geologists ridiculed Wagner's hypothesis of continental drift. They preferred their imaginary natural land bridges to explain away Wegener's evidence. How, they asked, could a continent plow through the solid rock of the ocean floor? Wegener had no convincing answer. He became the laughing stock of the field, a pariah at scientific conferences. Despite this, Wegener continued to fight for his ideas, conducting daring research expeditions to gather evidence. On one of these, he learned that colleagues were trapped on an ice cap without food. On his way back from the mission, he became lost in a blizzard. A day or two after his 50th birthday, he disappeared, never knowing that in time, he would be vindicated and come to be viewed as one of the greatest geologists in history.